Hi, you are watching Global Insights on Voice of Canada and this is Sana Haroon. Bitcoin is trading around US $62,000, 76.967 this week, a nearly 70% increase from a year ago. Squid Game token is a new cryptocurrency not affiliated with the hit Netflix show, but it cashed in on its global appeal anyway. Squid soared 6,000% last week, valued at more than $3,500 before plunging to zero. It was a scam and investors all around the world lost money. Market watchers say this latest fiasco serves as a warning. I would constantly caution uh, investors who have this FOMO, this fear of missing out, instead of jumping on the bandwagon of some new flavor of the week or flavor of the month, to take a step back. The idea is for anybody, only put money into a cryptocurrency that you're willing to lose in its entirety. But interest in crypto, which has surged during the pandemic, remains strong. Some financial experts recommend allocating somewhere between 1% and 5% of your investments to crypto, depending on your risk tolerance whether it can be a part of your portfolio, absolutely. Um, but it should not be a substantial part of your portfolio. Parents at a vaccination site in Pennsylvania were excited for their children to get the COVID-19 vaccines on Wednesday after the U.S. began administering shots for kids between 5 and 11 years old. And it's not in your arms either, look. No blood either. You did an awesome job. Just a band-aid for good luck, but you don't need it. <laughs> um, Colin Musk. And have you been have you been worried once when they were unvaccinated? Um, I wouldn't say worried, but just anxiously waiting and excited and hopeful for you know more of a return to normal. Today, um, I was very happy to get my younger son, who is 11, vaccinated, um, and it's just amazing just that we're able to do this um, for our own community and that hopefully this is a step towards bringing back some of the normality that we had before without the worry um, and responding great. Um, I think they actually are doing better than some of the adults did, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, and I think it's just a great night overall. Your kids being vaccinated. I am very excited. Were you worried about sending them to school unvaccinated? Um, a little bit. Um, I mean, we were wearing masks. To them. Western Australia police released an audio recording of the moment they discovered missing four year old girl Cleo Smith. I met little Cleo and uh, I met little Isla so, and uh, their friends and family, so it was a very nice experience. They're a very um, humble family, uh, very uh, well adjusted considering. Uh, Cleo uh, was a delightful little girl who was uh, playing in the backyard and uh, gave her the two, <laughs> two teddies, which we named, and uh, it was a um, uh, lovely experience to meet her. Uh, she was, um, I thought, very well adjusted considering. Very nice. We did a few high fives. Um, I unfortunately trod on her new Barbie shoes and broke one of them. Uh, so I wore a pair of shoes. Um, but gave her the two little uh, uh, police teddies, uh, which we, uh, we named uh, Cameron and Rod. Uh, Cameron and Rod Senior didn't seem to like that much, but I think that was, uh, that's appropriate. Uh, I'm not sure that name will stick. Uh, Cleo didn't seem too enamoured of those names. Uh, but it was, um, it was uh, a lovely experience to meet uh, that little girl. She's just bubbly, playing, um, friendly, sweet. She was eating an icy pole. Uh, she spilled it everywhere. She told me it was very, very sticky, which I believed. And uh, she was just delightful. They have. Uh, she's done a bit of sleeping, uh, a lot of eating. Uh, they've done a lot of... Uh, lying uh, around together and cuddling and uh, just uh, connecting as parents do with their little daughters. I don't think she was too keen on calling the little Teddy Cam <laughs> or, uh, or Rod um, quietly while the Premier was talking to her parents. I tried to convince her she should call it Mark. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, she, she, I'm not sure if she did recognise us. But you know, as I said uh, yesterday, she's, she's, a very, she's a lovely and sweet girl. She, um, 
you know, she's, she's quite trusting and welcoming. She'll talk, I'm sure, um, you know, she would talk to anyone and, and, uh, and, you know, it was good to, you know, just sit there and have a little uh, conversation with her and her parents. Yeah, it was really heartwarming to see, you know, her interacting and, and um, you know, playing in the backyard and, and just being herself and, um, and around her parents and, and see that, um, you know, this hasn't had, I'm sure that it has had an impact, but just to see her just behaving quite naturally like a, you know, a four-year-old girl should do and, um, and just enjoying being in the presence of her little sister and her family. Obviously, we have a man in custody and those investigations are continuing, so no charges have been laid as yet. Hollywood action star Dan Johnson de Rock said on Wednesday that his film production company would not use real guns anymore after a fatal shooting incident involving actor Alec Baldwin on the Rust film set in New Mexico last month. Yeah. yeah, that was a terrible scenario that happened. I've known Alec for uh, many, many years. He's a buddy of mine. And my heart goes out to the families of... Uh, everybody who was involved. Um, you know, I can't speak for other production companies, I can't speak for other studios, uh, but what I can tell you is this has uh, created a... Um, it's created a new lens and a new perspective, I think, on how we can operate moving forward. Uh, we have to use, as awful as this situation was, and is. Uh, we have to use this as an example and I think in a way to uh, be smarter as we move forward, be safer. Um, making movies and on sets is still a safe place and a lot of precaution is taken and there's a lot of professionalizing that happens in, in making movies. Um, there's a lot of pomp and circumstance as we know, right, that fans can enjoy like, that, you know, the big red carpets and movies, but the guts and the mechanics of movies, um, there's a lot of protection. Uh, but that said, I think moving forward now, I could speak on behalf of Seven Bucks Productions, moving forward on any Seven Bucks production, in television or film or otherwise, we will not use real guns uh, ever again. We are going to be using rubber guns and we'll take care of it in post. And we won't worry about the dollars, we won't worry about math or what the cost is. I think we're going to do it the right way. And that's what we're going to do uh, at Seven Bucks. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, man. During the COP26 climate conference, protesters dressed as Pokemon character Pikachu danced by the river cycle in Glasgow, Scotland on Thursday, urging Japan to stop burning coal and financing it abroad. The COP26 presidency, the UK government, calls countries to phase out coal, uh, even domestically, but Japanese government doesn't have any plans to phase out coal domestically, and they, uh, more, moreover, they are still expanding coal-fired power stations domestically, so it's, it's against climate pledge and it's against climate science so we demand Japanese government to stop uh, financing new coal-fired power stations overseas and um, we ask them to plan coal phaser by 2030 at latest. Keep watching Global Insights on Voice of Canada. For further updates, visit our website, voiceofcanada.tv.